Okay, today's the day. We're doing a stadium tour. Check it out. I don't know if you can see it all. I am freaking out. I've never seen so much Kansas City stuff in one place in my life. This shirt is so funny. We've got a big crew, so please stay with me so that we can get around the whole tour. I know it's exciting. People want to break away and take a picture and that kind of stuff. Uh, but I, you'll get pictures on the field. You're going to get pictures up in the penthouse, all of that fun stuff. So we'll get you pictures. We get to certain areas of the stadium. Uh, you want me to take a picture of the family, let me know. I'll be glad to help out. Ask all the questions while we're doing the tour. I'll be glad to try to answer them. And with that, we're going to make it start. Everybody when this stadium was built in 1972, it ended up here at the top of the pillars where you see the stone. This area here, when you walked out of the old arrowhead, this was the old outside walkway, and this was a parking lot right here. The late Lamar Hunt wanted to redesign the stadium to meet two qualifications. We want to host a Super Bowl or a World Cup soccer. So we blew the stadium out from 900,000 square feet. It's now 1,300,000 square feet. This stadium meets the requirements to host a Super Bowl or World Cup soccer. Right now, we're one of 17 cities in the running for the World Cup Soccer here in 2026. We've been awarded the 2023 NFL Draft. We'll be down at the Union Station. We have made an offer to the NFL to bring a Super Bowl here in the next four or five years. Now that they've gotten away from the league's mandatory dome and warm weather stadiums, plus Kansas City will have a new airport open here in another year and some more hotels, we think we've got an excellent chance of bringing a Super Bowl here. February's not too bad in Kansas City, although last year was, or this year, it was terrible. Uh, but hopefully in four or five years, the uh, cycle will change and uh, we'll get back to normal February 50, 60 degree weather here in Kansas City. This first area that I'm taking you to is a private club. To have access up here on game day, you're either a suite holder or a gold seat season ticket holder. Come on up. You're going to know some artwork and some sculpture on this floor. Sharon Hunt, the sister of Clark Hunt, she's commissioned artists in the six state region to bring their artwork and sculpture to this floor. The six state is our, our ticket base, which is Iowa, Nebraska, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas. So the artwork you see up here pertains to those six uh, states. I got to start off with Kansas City in the Jazz District and barbecue. You'll find that in here. Of course, you've got the Flint Hills, you've got the railroads, you've got the wheat, tornadoes, you've got the 4-H, you've got the uh, Indian Nation, a beautiful uh, 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 bunch of artwork. I'm trying to get it out. Uh, up here, it, normally she has open houses about three or four times a year. Right now, with the pandemic. Uh, that has been on hold. I don't know if she'll do anything this fall, and they are free. Uh, those of you that are in town, if you go to uh, Chiefs.com, and you'll see when the art shows are open uh, for viewing by the public. Uh, what we're going to do, this is set up for game day. We're going to walk around this way. I'm going to take you over to the window. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the legacy of the late Lamar Hunt, okay? As we go that way, you can see how it's set up. Nice, comfortable setting, kind of a hotel lobby uh, with the couches and chairs. You've got over 3,000 high-def television sets throughout the new Arrowhead. Uh, nice big booths and, and tables for you to enjoy the game. Tomorrow, for the, uh, like I said, go see season ticket holders and the suite holders, we'll have a three-day omelet uh, over there where the table's at. But we'll have breakfast for you for $8.95. Uh, but you're not a breakfast here, they'll have a chili bowl set up for you. You can add your sour cream and onions and Fritos and Doritos to it. Uh, we have an espresso bar right over here with the coffee. Uh, it's supposed to be hot tomorrow, but if it's cold and you want to put a little Jameson's or a little Kahlua or something in it, we've got that for you. <laughs> the dessert bar is this little tr uh, table here. Uh, we uh, will have the uh, chocolate cake, we'll have the red velvet cake, cheesecakes, brownies, cookies, hot fudge sundaes. Uh, we have three kitchens in this facility, so everything that's prepared up here for the sweet holders and the gold se season ticket holders is prepared fresh. We've got a pastry chef, we've got a regular chef, we smoke our own meat, steam our own fish, chicken, uh, or uh, shrimp, 
and so everything will be uh, nice and comfortable. If you don't like uh, our local cuisine, you've got the concession stands that run the perimeter. Get your hot dog, your hamburger, your bratwurst, and your nachos, whatever you like. Come on up as close as you can to the window. Uh, we've dedicated this North Tower to our late owner, Lamar Hunt. At age 27, Lamar wanted to get involved in NFL football, and there was a team available at the time called the Chicago Cardinals, became the St. Louis Cardinals, now the Arizona Cardinals. Obviously, he did not get the bid for that franchise, but the commissioner at the time contacted Lamar and said, look, don't take it personally. There were several other men interested in the uh, franchise. One of the men that was interested was a man by the name of Bud Adams, had the Houston Oilers, now the Tennessee Titans. He contacted Bud and said, I understand you're interested in the franchise. Would you be interested in coming in with me? We'll get six other investors and we'll form our own league. And that's how the American League. The Foolish Club? Pardon me? The Foolish Club? Is, uh, the Foolish Club is a private club? Yeah. Yeah, six original owners, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. 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 That's the six original owners. Yeah. Uh, the uh, former the American Football League, that's Mr. Uh, Hunt's logo that he put here in the center of the plaza. The uh, fountains that are on, you'll see uh, four flags on each side of the fountains. They're dedicated to the eight original American League teams. When we came into the league, we were the Dallas Texans. Um, the NFL put the Cowboys in Dallas to compete with the AFL. Lamar, being the savvy businessman that he was, knew that Dallas could not support two football franchises. Uh, was actually looking to move the team to New Orleans. When the mayor here, Chief Rachel Barber, made him an offer, we became the Kansas City Chiefs. LA Chargers down to San Diego, back to LA. I wish you guys would have stayed in San Diego. Though. <laughs> yeah, LA, LA. Yeah. We love San Diego. Yeah, I we love LA too. Give me an excuse to go out there for four or five days. I don't like LA. Yeah. I'll go there, but yeah. I like going to your mm -hmm. part. There's somebody else here from San Diego. Mm -hmm. uh, Chiefs football. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Chargers are pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Chargers, you've got the Broncos, the Buffalo Bills. The Cheaters, I mean the Patriots, <laughs> <laughs> the Houston Oilers, the Titans of New York became the New York Jets, and the eighth original American League team was the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, they were convinced to only last for one year. They were convinced to jump ship to the NFL because they weren't sure about the financial stability of the uh, American Football League. That left us with a little bit of a predicament because we need eight teams to play in our own league. Uh, the owners did go out to the West Coast, and that's where we formed our nemesis, those pesky Oakland Raiders, now Vegas Raiders. Yeah. They're, everybody's, they're everybody's pest. Yeah. The Chargers, anybody team, they, they, nobody likes them. Uh, <laughs> the pine trees were Mr. Hunt's favorite trees. You're going to find them only on this side of the stadium. The statue's a nice depiction of the late Lamar Hunt. I'm not sure why they've got that roped off right now, unless they're going to be doing a video. Uh, but uh, that is a nice depiction of the late Lamar Hunt. NFL owners will tell you, had it not been for the late Lamar Hunt, NFL football would not be where it's at today. The two-point conversion, painting in the end zone, converting the name of the players in the back of their jerseys, all came from the late Lamar Hunt. If y'all enjoy soccer, on the offseason, Lamar would travel through Europe and follow the soccer circuit. He introduced soccer to the United States, and one time we owned a team here called the Kansas City Wizards. They're now called Sporting KC. They're about 20 miles west of this campus. But we still own a soccer team in Dallas. We own a soccer team in LA. We own 25% of the Chicago Bulls, and we own our own semi-pro high soccer team called the Mavericks. Uh, so we are still very much involved in sports. Uh, the Hunt family, when this day was being built in the early 70s, to this day, they are the only out-of-state owner of an NFL franchise. They still reside in Dallas, Texas. Lamar figured it'd be a little bit easier for him to deal with the day-to-day -day business, as well as watch a game that he would just simply build a home inside the stadium. It's not quite the size of his house in Dallas. It is a modest 4,000 square foot, six bedroom with a kitchenette and a gym. I will point that house out to you today as part of your tour uh, as we come around to the south side. Sweet. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I know. I know, everybody talks about that. That's a great job. Yeah, that's a pretty Yeah, that's a great job. Yeah, that's a great job. Yeah, that's a great job. Yeah, you remember that commercial? Which one? When the guy's painting, painting the end zone. Oh. And then there's the armor. Like, that's, that's a great job. Oh, yes. Great job. Who are the chefs? Want to get away from Oh, you're not. There's 121 of these suites on this level. This suite is a medium suite. It's on the 50-yard line. It comes with outdoor seating. They've got the heat lamps above their seats to keep them warm in uh, December and January when the weather starts to get really cold in Kansas City. They've got the flat screens underneath the easement, so what they can't see on the instant replay board, they've got them up here. He's got his own flat screens in here. He's got a fireplace, bathroom. The fireplaces are really just for aesthetics. Uh, they 
do not generate any heat, uh, but it's comforting in the wintertime. It still feels good, kind of a placebo effect. Uh, this week, we'll run you 300 pounds of the season, and your uh, food and drink is extra, whatever you want to order for your clients. Uh, we do have large, medium, and small. This is anything between the 50 yard, I mean, the 25 yard line hash mark, you're going to pay a premium price. The 25 yard line hash mark is where you see the NFL logo between the 20 and the 30 down there. So anything in the gold, red, or the uh, sweets, you're going to pay more. So. We uh, had major construction going on here since February. We just wrapped everything up back in August. Uh, we replaced all of the gold level seats that you see across the way, all the way around. And the plastic manufacturer that's making our seats is running behind. So that's why you have the bright yellow and red and black seats on this uh, last end over here. As soon as the manufacturer sends them in, this will all uh, be the same gold that you have there now. Uh, but we had a Garth Brooks concert coming in here. We had a preseason game coming in here. We needed some type of a seat to put in there, so that's why it's the two different colors right now. What are the vehicles right there? Pardon me? It's in my time. Yeah. <laughs> it it's real grass. We do it, they all do it all by hand. Uh, that is a uh, North Carolina Bermuda that we have on that field. And the reason why we, because we replace this field every year in August, the reason why we use a Bermuda, the Bermuda is about this thick a piece of side. Uh, and it'll take root within about six to 10 days with the hot, humid weather in Kansas City. And our main concern is that that sod takes root so that when our players are out there in a, in a preseason game, that sod's not going to slip and they're going to blow out a knee or an ankle. Once the Bermuda will go dormant with the cold weather in Kansas City, and so the next month, he'll start seeing this with a hardy rye. Now, what you're going to see on TV right in now. December and January is the hardy rye that's taken over from the Bermuda. The Bermuda will go dormant, and it looks like straw is what it looks like. So we don't want our field right looking now. brown. Uh, we want it looking good for the cameras. So that's what you're going to see. Well, actually, November, December. Also, we've added radiant heat. That field stays at 85 degrees all winter long. Uh, that field will be just as soft in January when the wind, uh, when it's zero degrees temperature with a wind chill factor of five below as it is right now with all the hot, humid weather we've had here all summer long. So it's good for the, the players' traction, but also when they take a hit, it doesn't feel like they're landing on concrete. 2015, is that what you're doing? Would you just push that door shut? When we did the remodeling, like I told you, we went to 900,000 square feet. We're going to keep walking a little bit. From 900,000 square feet to a million, uh, uh, 300,000 square feet, we sent out a questionnaire to the fans asking you what you wanted to see in a new area. They wanted larger seating numbers, which you can see your life to it. They also wanted some local food vendors in here. We're the Midwest. Hey, we love our barbecue. We like our uh, tacos. And we like our southern fried, uh, honey, uh, butter fried chicken. Uh, that's your local restaurants, and then you got a stadium. If you don't like the local cuisine, you've got the concession stands to get you with nachos, with your uh, Fritos, uh, um, popcorn. I had some folks here last week from San Diego. They asked me about the sushi bar. Martin, we don't eat our fish that way. We fry everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to give you guys a heads up. Everything's deep fried here, but no, no raw fish in this game. I guarantee you that. It's always like San Diego, but it's always my West Coast guys that say. Where's the sushi? Right, right, right. This is the part of here, the wrong part of the country. Right, right. We don't need that. It's got to be deep fried. Okay. Uh, so, uh, again, there's the tacos that are made fresh for you right there. They've got the Greek uh, flour tortillas, they've got pork uh, chicken or uh, uh, pork chicken or beef, and they've got the pepper de gallo, and they've got the sour cream. I mean, for eight bucks, it's a great little uh, breakfast or dinner or lack of lunch with a Bloody Mary. It's a uh, camp. Yeah. Try it out. They make it fresh right here in front of you. Uh, fresh popcorn, pop popcorn. Over here on the left, uh, of course, we got Portman Sponsor with Coca Cola, 360 Vodka. Over here on the uh, your left, this is the Chiefs Community of Champions. Lamar wanted you to see how much our players get back to the community. So many times, the only time you hear about our players when they're in trouble with the law. But our boys work with the first responders, they work with the uh, military. Uh, back in 2011, an F5 tornado hit a small town south of us called Joplin, Missouri. We took out about a third of the city, a lot of loss of life. We took out the high school and the hospital. We adopted that city for three years to help them rebuild. Uh, the press followed us for a while, but it was too much good news, and they decided just to leave it alone. To, even to the point that we let the high school boys come up here and play their homecoming game, and 100% of the proceeds went back to Joplin, Missouri. Nice. Uh, 
Larry Thomas down here on your uh, the last two uh, pictures, that's the Ferris wheel with his young man. Gary Thomas, number 58, I'm going to see the 58s right now. Yeah. DT, you'll see those uh, jerseys, very dear to our heart. This, uh, Gary Thomas has the record of uh, defensive quarterback sacks of seven in one game. A lot of your defensive ends would love to have seven quarterback sacks in one yeah. season. <laughs> Unfortunately, Gary was not wearing a seatbelt on the way to the airport to get some ice, was involved in a bad accident. He survived the accident, was paralyzed from the waist down. We had him in rehab down in Miami where his family is at. And when he lifted him up to go to rehab, a blood clot broke loose in his calf and he passed away. But that's why we still, have, you'll see that his good buddy Neil Smith right here at the end has taken over his uh, third and long foundation, which is an inner city, inner city reading program for the children here in Kansas City, Missouri. We're proud of the fact that we're the only NFL team to have five Walter Payton end of the year. Uh, this is a very prestigious award that every NFL player looks forward to be nominated for. Um, it's voted on by the sports writers and it's predicated on what your charity gives back to the community. Uh, Dustin, Col or Dustin. Uh, Travis Kelsey was our nominee in the last two years. Unfortunately, he did not get it. And like I said, it's announced the Saturday night before Super Bowl. See, I think Wilson from the uh, Seahawks got it last year. But I, well, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So. Over here on the right, you're going to see some open air suites. You can see the fans are on. Uh, they have the misters to keep you nice and cool tomorrow. I heard it's supposed to be around 90 degrees for game day. Of course, it's a noon game, which is going to feel probably like 100 degrees in here. Uh, those of you that are sitting on this side, bring some sunscreen because you're going to get cooked pretty good. Uh, those of you sitting on the south side, bring a coat because you're going to be a free speed over there. It's always cold. On <laughs> These sweets run around 50,000 a season. Uh, and your food and drink is extra, whatever you want to order for your clients. And they're just strictly around the end zone. We took out the artificial turf because we had a quarterback that wanted to play here, but he didn't, wasn't excited about playing on artificial turf. And that was Joe Montana. We couldn't get Montana. We couldn't get that turf out of here fast enough to bring Joe in here. At that same time, too, we had Marcus Allen come in here. We had uh, Dan Dean Rice come in here. This is all in the early 90s. We really had a good group. We see up on the wall there. We do have three 10 by 20 gel cells in our stadium that are just concrete block and steel bench, no flat screen. We uh, wanted to make the Raiders fans feel at home. We call that, we call that the Raiders gated community. Now, it's, it's not the gated community that you and I live in, but that's where they'll end up when they come to Kansas City. And that's what makes this stadium so unique. The reason uh, it's designed this way, Lamar wanted every seat to face the field without any obstruction while you're here on the game day. When we get out here, we're, you'll notice there's not a pillar, there's not a flat screen, there's nothing on block with you when you're here tomorrow to watch a game. We advertise in this stadium there is not a bad seat in the house. Even my $35 or my $65 upstairs, there is not a bad seat in the house. Uh, the upstairs when we get out there is a vertical wall. Those of you that have never been up there, or any of you that have tickets with number three on it, it is a vertical wall. The best way I can describe it up here is to take the ladder out of your garage, put it on the piece of gutter yeah. in your house, and walk up that ladder like you're going to the roof. That's what it's like walking upstairs in the house. Yeah, yeah. We came to come over here. He had microphones all set up. And he's a dapper looking English gentleman in his suit, walking around here and doing his thing. Uh, but yeah, we crushed Seattle late. And they, they've got a partial dome. I've got a partial roof. And uh, yeah, they still cry about that. I laugh. Uh, the players will enter through that back door where all the traffic's coming and going. The Chiefs players will get here around 8 30 tomorrow morning, and they're going to go down this hallway to their locker room, which is on the 50 yard line. The uh, Chargers uh, well, the players will get here around 9 9 30. I think you guys are staying at the Western Crown Center. If you want to go down and get some photos down there in uh, downtown, I don't talk to you. That's usually where they stay. But they'll get here around 9, 9.30. Their locker room is right here. Let me open this door. We're not going to go down this way. I'm just going to show you what this looks like. And uh, there's their lockers there. The Chiefs locker room is down on the 50. I can't get you into the Chiefs locker room today because it's been uh, uh, sanitized. And we also have the equipment in there for tomorrow's game. Tomorrow at uh, around noon, we'll introduce the still call you San Diego. LA Chargers, they'll come out of the tunnel. We'll give them a good old Kansas City welcome, which will be boo, right? What else do you do? <laughs> Respectively. And then a few minutes later, the only time the Chiefs players come out of the E-Tunnel is at the kickoff. 
Uh, we will come out, we'll have the Chiefs cheerleaders down here for a little funnel. We'll still do some smoke, we'll still do some fireworks. It's time to play ball. The Chargers team will sit right across the field where you see the white uh, benches, and the Chiefs will be down here on my left. That's the way. At halftime, the Chiefs players, I mean the Chargers players, are going to come back up the tunnel because their locker rooms here. The, uh, the uh, Chiefs players are going to the Chiefs players will go up the 50 yard line. This is where I'm going to take you. Uh, I'm going to go down to the field. Got cameras in the uh, uh, pylons right there where you see the little holes. Section 117, right there is where we'll be sitting tomorrow. Ooh, can't wait. Okay, I just have to do this. I just have to do this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's where the guys put their helmets. I want you to see how loud it is. On the count of three, short and sweet, as loud as you can, I want you all to go, Chiefs! Don't drag it out. I got two, three, got about 30 people here. So you kind of get an idea of what's like, and then you're going to compound that tomorrow by 100,000%, okay? <laughs> count of three, short and sweet, Chiefs, all right? One, two, three, Chiefs! Oh my gosh. <laughs> One more time, a little louder, short and sweet, okay? One, two, three, Chiefs! Oh, that's so cool. That's 143.5. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so he, uh, 93 told me 93 was his best shot when Montana. Big up. Uh, it's a poker Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right underneath Lanier's name is Eric Stone Street Suite. He just got engaged. And right here in this window is where Patrick Mahomes proposed to Brittany. Right there. I do. I do this as a hobby. I have a great career. I already come in here on Friday and Saturday. How long have you been doing it? I told Clark back in 2010 when he remodeled the stadium. He wanted to show the stadium, but he wanted somebody to have a history with the Chiefs. I grew up with the Chiefs in 63. <laughs> So the Chiefs players come up this way at halftime. The Chargers will go back up E Tunnel because their locker room is down there. Uh, the Chiefs locker room is right here to the left. This is our new model for this year, one team, one vision. And that vision is to go back to the Super Bowl and bring back another trophy out in LA. This is called the uh, locker room club. Anybody that's a season ticket holder, you can apply for this locker room club. If you're an Arrowhead, you get points when you buy your season ticket. You get points when you buy apparel, food, or drink. And what you do, you set up an account and you bid up to take those points and you bid on everything we've got available from sideline pass, board the games, autograph football, helmets, jerseys, and this is incredible. These are all limited. All my clubs that I'm taking to, we do have a cutoff. We're not going to sell a uh, thousand uh, passes in here and you can't have a good time. Normally, this is about 150 to 175 people. I will tell you right now, we're still not letting the fans touch our players. And you can see where the tables are at. There's only three on that table. The fans uh, the down here will be staying on that side. We will not high-five our guys as they come in and go to the locker room. 
Uh, normally, uh, when the things were normal, the, you can use a fan to be up here against the, the window, and you can pitch out and take a picture, high five the players as they come in and as they go back out. Uh, you get a wristband like this, so that if you want to come down here and enjoy festivities, uh, you've got the flat screens, you've got your restrooms, you've got the bar, you've got food, you've got everything down here for you on game day. Uh, these are little nice slides the cheerleaders and the referees locker rooms down this hallway, the uh, post game room for the uh, for the uh, Chargers tomorrow, with the post game down there, the back in LA. Uh, uh, what else is that? Uh, we're going to go into. Let's go ahead and lead the way. I'm going to take you to the press. Uh, Material is brown. To the right of that is the indoor practice facility where the players were Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, but it's uh, they got a full uh, 110 uh, football field with Nike turf. We've got three outdoor facilities behind that hedgerow of trees. But uh, the, the weight room, doctors, right here, there's a whole that whole place is a lot larger than what you can see from up here. Down here, the parking lot and the, where you see these red and white cars park, that's reserved for the. Uh, Mr. Hunt's guest, as well as the signature suites. Um, if they don't want to walk the stairs right here where the people are standing, right here where this car just pulled up, we've got a valet service, we'll park your car for you. The Chiefs players will park in this white fist in area over here. The visiting team buses will back in over there where you see the CBS sports, that's where the five buses will back in. And then that tunnel that everybody's just going in and out, it's just to the right of this red car check roof that you see down here on your left. Come on into the panel. And this big tent right here is a chapel if you want to go to church before the game. Five stories above ground level. The field's down three stories. You're 12 stories from that field. We've got another NFL stadium. You can add an eight to the ninth floor and have a premium club like we've got here with a view like this. Uh, again, it's the way the stadium is designed. Remember I told you every seat faces the field. The reason the windows are inverted is that when you sit on these seats, you are actually looking down. I noticed everybody grabbing the handrail as you went down here to get your photo. That's because you are going down. If they had built this straight, you'd be looking over the top of the baseball stadium out there to the north of us. Uh, the top windows do open, so if you want to get the room of the barbecue and the crowd noise, they've got that option. Over here in the right corner, that's our production. All the music and lights that you're going to see tomorrow, it's going to come out of that uh, production. Right here in this first cubicle, that's my Spanish-speaking station in Kansas City. The next cubicle is my Spanish-speaking station to Mexico and Panama. The uh, frosted glass, that's where the Chargers entourage will be. Next to that will be the Chargers radio station. Yeah. And then next to him will be his assistant and offensive defense coordinators. Mitch Holis, the voice of the Chiefs, this is where he broadcast up here. And our assistant offensive defensive coordinator will be up here. Our Armed Forces radio station down here broadcasting to our brave men and women serving the military around the world up here. And the yellow panels that you see all the way down at the other end where they're having the wedding tonight, that is our 225 print press boots. Uh, that's what we needed to qualify for World Cup or, or uh, Super Bowl. When, uh, when I say print press now, they just simply plug in their laptop. There's no more fax machines or, or landlines up there. And then they just do their typing and send it to the LA Times or to the Sports Illustrated. But that's, that'll be packed over there uh, as every game. So. who's got the art gallery on the fourth floor, was playing with a little rubber ball called a Super Ball. She said, Daddy, you ought to call this a Super Ball trophy. Lamar played with the idea, changed it to bowl. Uh, Vince Lombardi, a legend in the NFL, had just passed away, put Vince's name on it, added the Roman numerals to class up the trophy. Today, the Lombardi Super Bowl trophy, all from the late Lamar Hunt. The 2019-2020 trophy, you notice that they, uh, they deviated from the uh, Roman numerals, and they've added the name of the stadium and the dates on that. 
Uh, and so that's kind of a new trend. Although they will be still be using the Roman numerals to promote the Super Bowl event uh, every year. So. goes to the sideline, talks to Andy, and, and says, do we have time to run the wash? Now, when he said, do we have time to run the wash, it wasn't the time on the clock. He needs four seconds to drop back and set up to do this play. And that's when they told him, go ahead and throw the wash. The dotted line is the route of the ball that he threw. This is Tyreek out here that's coming out. This is Kelsey, does his zigzag, comes out. That defensive end, I mean, that defensive back, thought it was going to come to Kelsey. That's why he pulled up to cover Kelsey. By, uh, this ball's already in the air. By the time uh, Tyreek gets down there, the ball's waiting for him. We went in, got the, it was third and 15, got that first. It was a big pivotal move because that put us on about the 10-yard line, and we really crushed their back, uh, the 49ers. They really thought this thing was wrapped up. Uh, but this is the big play in, uh, in our wow. – in every game, you're going to have a big play uh, in Super Bowl. So we put it in there. Great. Really good. All right, everybody, it's come down this way. We're going to go out this door. We're going to go around the red logo, and we're going to head back.